Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Ooh. If you need an answer to Garage your question, please, John, do you have a suggestion? Please, he's a fountain of all knowledge. I think he might have gone to Garage Band College. What he doesn't know, we'll try and find out. So join the chat and give him a shout. John. Garage Man Weekly. Good, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You can't see me, but I'm here. <laughs> Welcome to Garage Man Weekly on this week's show. We're taking a look at the difference between Logic Pro on the iPad and Garage Band on the iPad. There's some things that Logic can do that Garage Band can't, and some of them are really obvious, you know, beat breaker, sample alchemy, all the features you've probably heard about. But I'm looking at things that maybe you haven't thought about, things that are part of your daily music production. And on the flip side, what can GarageBand do that Logic Pro can't? Yeah, I've actually found some of those too. So that's our feature topic we'll be jumping into in just a few moments. Uh, but first, we're going to jump into some news and notes and say good day to the folks who are here live as well. So what have we got in terms of GarageBand news and notes this week? Well, everyone's been talking about Logic Pro for iPad, y'all. It's been the number one topic in all of the mobile creating and as well as desktop creating forums because... Yeah, there's been a lot of talk. A lot of desktop creators using Logic for Mac have been uh, dabbling in Logic for iPad and for the most part complaining about the fact that it's not exactly the same as the Mac version. And you know what? This is this is the news and notes, not Pete's opinion piece, but I actually think that it's not supposed to be. And I'll talk about that more when we get into the feature topic, but I think that Logic Pro on the iPad is more for mobile creators moving to iPad than it is for desktop creators moving to iPad. I think if, you, if you're using all the powerful features of Logic for Mac, you should probably stick to Logic for Mac. But that's just my two cents. So uh, that's definitely been a lot of the news. Uh, iOS and iPadOS 16.5 has hit the shores, the stores, the shelves. Has, and look, it, it's had mixed reviews. Some people have updated and have had zero problems. I've updated and I'm getting all sorts of weird little niggles. So my advice remains that it is not a major security update. If you're on iOS 16.4. whatever, I would hang out there for now unless there is a critical security update. I would wait for iOS uh, 17 because we know that the cycle is usually, the, or 16.6, or .6. we know that the cycle is usually uh, that it'll, it'll go to 17 with the launch of the new iPhones, which will be in about September to October this year. And 16.5 doesn't bring anything specifically new and no major security updates. What it has done for some of us, it's made it impossible to use Final Cut on iPad. Jade Starr's having this issue. I'm having this issue. <laughs> Jade's been on the phone with, with Apple for hours trying to sort it out. So, and that's apparently something to do with iOS 16.5 or at least related to it. We've had folks having problems with hardware, with things like their lightning to USB adapters. Now, it's kind of been revealed that it's mostly third-party hardware. But uh, still, be beware, caveat emptor, by beware with that one. Uh, and for me, I've had all sorts of weird Bluetooth-related issues. So I, I use um, the AirPods Pro. They're kind of what I have in my pocket, what I take with me everywhere I go. And they're starting to do weird things, like when I connect, they'll show up twice. And then they won't actually work. I won't be able to play and pause and do the volume. And I've had to unpair them and physically repair them about three times. And it's still happening. So... My uh, my read on this would be if you don't have to update to iPad OS 16.5 or iOS 16.5, maybe just hang out on the previous version for a little while longer. Thomas Christ says uh, still not working for him either. Yeah, it's a worry. So I would reconsider your iOS 16.5. Uh, the only other bit of news that I thought I'd throw in here is I just bought this. Uh, and I've been experimenting with it. What is this? What the heck, Rooney, is that? Well, this is a MagSafe iPhone uh, adapter or a stand um, for my iPhone to use. Uh, my iPhone is a camera. So the continuity camera has been added to the latest version of macOS and iOS, and I thought I would try it. So I have tried it. The results are about the same. It, it's a better picture because it's using the iPhone camera than the webcam I'm using right now. But things like StreamYard that I'm using now don't play nicely with it. Things like Webcam Settings, which is the app that I use to control my webcam and make sure that you know my background is not so bright so you don't see the messiness behind me. So I, 
this stage, the jury's still out. I'm trying to sort of tweak it and tweak it and make sure that it's going to look better. But it, it does look really cool for things like just recording a video. Uh, if I wasn't doing streaming, uh, it's pretty good. So yeah, I'll, I'll test that out and I'll be your guinea pig again. Don't go out and buy the $40 adapter uh, until you've seen what I've got to, to, to do with it. All righty. Um, Thomas says he also had issues with logic crashing when I make a new track and a new project. Unplugging and replugging the interface fixed it last time. Yeah. And, and Logic Pro is a 1.0 bit of software. That's the thing that I think a lot of people are forgetting, that this is <laughs> this is almost like a beta. I know they're not calling it a beta test, but this is almost like your beta test. So if you're using Logic Pro right now, yeah, I, I would hold off on it. If, if you really are worried about these sort of things, let the likes of me, let this mug be the guinea pig for you and find out exactly how it's working. Speaking of which, we better crack onto the show, but not before we uh, do our duties and say good day to all the cool people hanging out here in the live chat. If you're not here live, we do GarageBand Weekly every week. Check your local schedules for the time. G'day to Sean Palmer. G'day Jade Star Princess LDG. John Swanson. Hello to you, Keith. Daboodwo. Hello to you. Um, hello to Weary Pirates. Ahoy there, Leslie Ann. G'day to you, Joe and Barry. Glenn. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of people. Uh, please uh, go ahead and say hello uh, if you are here live. Spoiler alert, logic is better. Yes, but better is subjective. And uh, better is in the... It's like saying um, Katy Perry is better than Lily Allen. Well, yes, if you judge better by number of album sales and by overall popularity, but I happen to like Lily Allen's music better than Katy Perry's. So uh, some people may like GarageBand better than Logic Pro. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Blanka, hello. Kim Harden Hudson, hello to you. Robert Latzer, g'day to you. I hope you're all doing well and uh, time for a smoke. Yeah, Mix Club was here early, had time to sneak a smoke in before we get started. If you do have questions, we are. I'm going to jump through this feature topic, but if you do have questions, you can put a cue in front of your comment as we're going through. I'll then come back and tag any questions. So we won't be answering them in this little sort of 20 minute rant where I go through the Logic Pro versus GarageBand stuff but I will return and answer any questions because we are interactive here and if you're on the replay you can jump down into the comments section I'm hanging out there all the time I'm, <laughs> I've had a few videos about Logic Pro and I'm getting so many comments and questions I'm about a day behind but uh, trust me, after the hockey, after the playoffs today, uh, after I watch that game, I will be back on board and uh, checking checking the chat. Uh, yeah, glad to, glad to have you here live. Always good. Uh, you know, the replay crew, I love you. I love you to bits. But there's nothing better than being here live and being involved. All right. So let's, uh, let's dive in, shall we? Let's jump in here to our iPad. Here's one I prepared earlier. This is, of course, Garage Band. This is my song called Goats. And uh, if we want to listen to it, it sounds a little something like this. Need to test my audio. One, two, one, two, three, let's go! All right, hopefully that audio is coming through at the right volume. I, I was blowing people's ears off last week, so I've tried to balance my volume is better. I also have the exact same project loaded up here in Logic Pro because I thought let's compare apples with apples, or in this case, goats with goats. And so we've got the exact same project right here. And because these are first thing, because I've got my cycle set, it's gone back to the start of the project. So uh, let's play here. Sounds pretty similar, right? One, two. One, two, three, let's go! Yeah, same song, but in different doors. So, what are we talking about here today? Well, let me bring up my notes, and then we will dive in to the main topic, because, you know, John's, as usual, unprepared, doesn't even have his notes app open, uh, so I don't actually have the details of what we're going to talk about. All right, we've opened those up. Well, while I'm doing that, uh, I do suggest if you do have questions about Logic Pro for iPad, there's one place to go. It's logicipad.com. It's this place here. This is where you can jump in. You can check out my beginner's guide to Logic Pro. You can check out all of the playlists of all the videos Check out the download if you haven't already downloaded it. The iPad user guide, 940 pages of goodness there, and uh, the Apple web page and announcements. So all the information you need, logicipad.com. But let's jump back over here now that we've got things set up and dive into this feature topic. So I'm going to go through seven things that Logic Pro does that GarageBand doesn't. 
Then we're going to flip it over. We're going to turn the tables and I'm going to tell you seven things that GarageBand iOS does that Logic Pro doesn't do. So we're going to try and be fair and make this a fair fight. So round one, ding, 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 ding. Logic Pro, let's start with you. Logic Pro has a stereo out and a master track. Now, this is going to be big for a lot of people. So if you've been using GarageBand for a long time, and I've talked about this on a few recent videos, been using GarageBand for a long time, you'll realize that one of the biggest limitations here in GarageBand is that you have no master track. Now, there's workarounds, there's hacks, there's heaps of videos here on the channel to show you how to do this. You can use the FX track as I've done here and jump into the EQ and use the gain slider to turn things down there. That's pretty gosh darn clunky to be able to get the right, uh, the right levels. And you don't have the ability to control what's called auto normalization. So if you're brand new, a lot of folks will already know this, but if you're brand new to the world of GarageBand and mobile music creating on, uh, or online, auto normalization takes your track, it takes the project that you've got here, and at the end, if it's too quiet, it brings it up to zero dB, it normalizes the volume. That one's okay, but you know what it also does? If your track is too loud, it actually limits it. So you get that pumping sound, you get that horrible limited sound on your track, which you don't want. It's no bueno. Whereas here in Logic Pro, the benefit is of having a stereo out track is a few things. We can actually, when we hit the play button here, we can adjust the overall volume. Let's show you that now. We'll come down here to uh, further on in the track, turn off the cycle and play. And in this world, and I find it hard. So not only can we actually just turn the track down there, but we have metering as well. Yeah, we can see if we're clipping. So we know here that at that original volume, if we just bring that back up to our zero level there, when we're playing, it's it's clipping in at around minus two. So if we play this again. Day by day. And the cool thing about having a master fader here is we can instantly see if we clip. So if we turn this track up too loud, look what happens. All the news that is fake, all the walls that they make, and there's... Immediate red. You can easily and quickly see, because we've got a master track here in Logic Pro, we can quickly and easily see why it's, uh, why what's happening there and the fact that it's clipping. The difference there is if we did that same thing here in GarageBand without a master track, you wouldn't know. It could be clipping, but GarageBand is holding your hand so much that it, it won't show you. you. You see this meter here, and sometimes you'll see this meter go up and look like it's in the red. I need to find enough. See, here it's limited because we're using this FX trick. But if I came here and I changed this one here and turned this volume up, it'll look loud up here. Other way. And it does have those little sort of orange leave behinds, but there's no way to know, is that clipping? Is that right at zero dB? Where exactly is it? So number one for Logic Pro is the ability to have your master track. And let's go to number two. Logic has the ability to stretch time. Yes, you can bend space and time continuum. So here in GarageBand, if we had a track here that we want, wanted to bring in, say we wanted to bring in a beat or a loop or something, or we wanted to stretch out this vocal to fill in a passage, there's no way to do it. You've got your trim handles there. You've got a few options under the hood, but you don't have the ability to stretch things. If we come over here to Logic Pro, we actually have the ability to do that. So not only can you analyze the tempo of things, so say you brought in a track, say I hadn't recorded these live, I'd brought these tracks in, there's tempo options here under the hood where we can analyze the tempo, we can use smart tempo to actually determine what the speed is, and then we can stretch it. So because we have the ability to stretch here, we can beat match. And this is a huge thing. If you're an electronic producer, the ability to beat match from one track to another, from one beat to another, that's definitely a big thing. So you can see here, see how it's shrinking and growing that waveform? Yeah, that's the difference there. You can actually move it around as opposed to just trimming the front and the back. So if you're the sort of person that likes to bring in other sounds, bring in samples, do remixing, Logic Pro has additional tools for you there. Logic Pro also has multiple tempos, keys, time signatures, and unique time signatures too. So unlike GarageBand, and look, it sounds like I'm dunking on GarageBand, but we'll get there. GarageBand will have its time. Don't you worry. GarageBand has some cool things that Logic Pro doesn't. I promise you that. But if we come in here to GarageBand and we start looking at your, your settings, you've only got the ability to set one tempo. You've only got the ability to set one time signature, and you can only choose between those three, and you can only set one key signature for your entire project. Now, there's workarounds. 
if you've been around this channel long enough, you'll know some of the workarounds that I've showed before. You can use two different projects at two different tempos and then bring them together. I did that in one of my song temper tracks. So there are ways to actually do it, but it is a bit of a workaround and a hack. So if you are not ever using multiple tempos, multiple time signatures or multiple key signatures, stick with GarageBand, you'll be fine. But if you're finding that a limitation and you want the ability to use multiples, you can use it over here in Logic. And the way to do that is to hit this drop down. And then if we tap and hold in this track header area, we can go time signature, tap and hold again, and go key signature. And what we can do now is you can actually adjust these. So you can add in an additional key signature. We can change this one. We can, uh, if we go to the end of the track here, so it's in C there at the moment. And what we can do is actually, well, I haven't, I haven't done much of this. <laughs> We can move this, tap and drag, and so, why is that not clipping? <laughs> because it doesn't have a T. I haven't added a different one. Let's add in another one. So we can change this to like a, a G and put it in there, and then we can move between them. Can you tell I haven't done the video on these? I haven't actually worked it. I've not done multiple key signatures, but you can do it. Uh, I just need to work out how to split those and move them around. Great demo, Johns. You're doing well. All right, we'll undo that. You can also use multiple time signatures and you can even have multiple tempos. So your tempo track here works kind of like an automation track. You can add your tempo here and then you can move the tempo between these. So if we grab this one, look at that. You can suddenly change the tempo and it'll adjust not only your virtual tracks, but it'll adjust the speed of your audio tracks as well. Let's take a listen. Yay, with all the things that are happening in this world. Didn't work perfectly for that one, probably because I've brought this across from GarageBand and some of those audio files aren't adjusting. But uh, when you, you're creating just in Logic, you can do that. You can ramp between your tempos as well. So there's a, a lot of cool options under the hood. If you're the sort of person that wants to produce more complex tracks, and again, you don't have the just the 4, 4, 3, 4, 6, 8. If you want to do something in 9, 12, you can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, so that's number three. Number four is that Logic has a mixer. A mixer, yeah. Yeah, we actually have a mixer, and I mentioned this sort of in the master track as well, that we have things like clip detection, but you don't have only just have it on your master bus, you can actually check if you're clipping on any track because you've got the metering right there. You've also got a bunch of plugins that you can add. You've got the ability to adjust everything here in your setup. You can resize your mixer, so if you want like a big full-size mixer here, you can see absolutely everything in one spot, as opposed to if you're mixing in GarageBand, you often don't know what plugins you have on what track. So even though you've got the ability to come in here and see what's going on, you can come in here and go, oh, okay, what have I got on here? Okay, I've got a compressor, I've got tape delay, stereo delay, etc. You have to always be going in and out. There's no one place where you can see everything. So, and if you're the sort of person like me that mixes on the go, it's not the hugest issue, but you do have a much easier time of it when you get to that mixing phase using the mixer in Logic. Number five for Logic. Number five for Logic is the customization. If you're the kind of person that likes to use all the colors of the bow, dude, you can do that here in Logic Pro because here in the inspector, you've got the option here to change on your track. You can change the color. You can obviously rename it. You can do that in GarageBand as well. You can change the icon, but just having that color difference because one of the criticisms a lot of GarageBand users have over time is they're like, I never know what my tracks are. I know that blue is audio. I know that yellow is drummer. I know that green's MIDI, but there's no other color coding I can do and you can't change any of your color coding. So I know that's something that Cubasis and Aurea Pro users have been talking about for a while and that they wanted to see in GarageBand. Well, unfortunately, GarageBand has no color changes, but if you're using Logic Pro, you can. Number six, Logic can quantize your audio tracks. You have the quantization options in here. And the reason I mentioned this one is it's it's not one of those big features that Apple present on the front page of the web page. But for most creators, especially those of us that maybe you're a weekend warrior, maybe your timing ain't perfect. Well, that's why quantization is important. And in GarageBand, you've got very basic quantization options. You can quantize only a MIDI track. So none of these tracks can actually be quantized because these are audio tracks. So you go into your settings of these and there's no quantization options available. We can only quantize a 
MIDI track. Whereas in Logic Pro, not only do you have significantly more quantization options, if we come here to the region, you have a heap more quantization options. When you turn quantization on, you can quantize to a whole bunch of different things and you can actually set it at different levels. Uh, so you can set the swing level there, you can set the strength, so you don't have to have it fully quantized, you can just have it a bit quantized and you can do it on a track. So have you ever had that guitar track where, you know, you hit that note just a bit too early and you wished you could just line it up? Yeah, well, you can throw the quantization on here and it will detect, it'll detect your transients and it will quantize even in your audio track. So I think that's kind of worth the price of admission right there because if there's one thing that I've heard a lot of in the, and look, it's, it's, it's nature. Like you, you, when you're practicing, when you're learning, you're not going to be right on the beat. You're not going to be right in the pocket all the time but quantization can help, excuse me. I'm getting all choked up talking about quantization. But yeah, if you're, if you're starting out and you're not, you're not quite happy with your timing, little quantization here and there definitely can't hurt. Uh, and number seven, our final lucky seven, Logic can add a larger number of plugins per track. One of the biggest challenges that I hear from folks, especially those using guitars in GarageBand, but even any other audio tracks or even MIDI tracks is the limited number of plugins. Now, I say this is kind of tongue in cheek because we used to have plugins that were this section. We used to literally have this compressor, this treble and bass, and this echo and reverb, and that was it. It wasn't until GarageBand 2.1 that we added the AUV3 audio unit plugin support. So, AUV3, but have a look at this. Look at this one here. We've got a compressor and an EQ on there, and GarageBand gives us room for one plugin. One measly plugin. What if we want to throw a flange on here and a microphaser and a better EQ to, to be able to EQ this or, or throw another amp sim on here? We can't do it because you've got a limited number of plugin slots. So if you're finding, and again, that's what this, the point of this whole video is to tell you that you can use GarageBand, but if you're hitting these walls, you're hitting these limitations, these are the things where you might want to consider Logic Pro because if you compare that to the plugins that you can add here in Logic Pro, you can just keep going and going and going. So this one's got noise gate, pedals, amp designer, compressor, the platinum verb. We can just keep adding audio effects till the cows come home. And I haven't hit the limit yet. I haven't tried to, but I've got up to about 20 on one track and it's still going and going and going. It's like an energizer battery. Uh, Energizer Bunny. So you can actually just keep adding EQ, uh, EQ vacating plugins, third party plugins, built in plugins, a whole bunch of them. So, yeah, having the flexibility to have all of those additional plugins, and I've probably ruined that track now, but that's okay. All those additional plugins is the number seven thing. So, there are some things, and I'll, I'll summarize the whole why Logic Pro is amazing and why you need to go and, and use it immediately by saying this. If you're a GarageBand user and you haven't come across any of those limitations, you've never cared about the master track, you've never cared about having metering and, and monitoring that, you've never cared about being able to add any more plugins, you've never cared about color coding your tracks, you don't want to use multiple weird ass time signatures. You want to create in 4-4, you want to hit record, you want to keep it simple, and you want to record your music. GarageBand is perfect for you. All right, GarageBand, it's your turn. Ding, 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 ding. GarageBand's just been sitting there in the corner while the rap battle's been taking place, just going, yeah, whatever. New kid on the block, think you're so flash. Yeah, I got vomit on my sweater already, Miles. No, uh, it's saying, <laughs> I've got some things that you can't have, you young whippersnapper. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Seven things that GarageBand has, advantages over that GarageBand has over Logic Pro. Numero uno is the simple interface that it has. Yeah. So when you're creating a brand new project here in GarageBand or even adding a track, but we'll go, we'll go back and create a new project. So say we're coming out of this one and we want to come in and we want to create a brand new song in GarageBand. Here's how easy it is. We hit create song and we're like, uh, I need some, uh, I need some drums to kick us off. So let's, uh, let's grab Kyle here on the skin. Nice one, Kyle. Uh, I want to add me some bass. Uh, so let's just bring up the uh, let's bring up the bass. Uh, what do we want in way of a bass? Uh, yeah, let's just let's just throw some bass in here. Sounds like under the boardwalk, doesn't it? What do we want to add now? Well, uh, let's we need a string pad here. Let's throw some strings on these. This is going to sound cool. What about this? Uh, 
that's sounding pretty good. What do we want to add now? Let's hit the add button here. Uh, I know, let's get some guitars going on here. Uh, but I don't know how to play guitar. So what do I do? How do I play guitar here? Oh, yeah, let's just use autoplay. Well, I know I was doing it a G, so let's just try some autoplay in G. Uh, do two fingers. That looks pretty good. Let's go back uh, here to my track view and see what we've created in, you know, one minute's time. Well, we need a quick mix here because I uh, couldn't hear that guitar very well. Let's grab the guitar, turn you down a bit, Kyle. Sketchpad, right? GarageBand iOS is your sketch pad. I haven't had to touch a single instrument. I haven't had to know much about music at all. And I've got myself a bit of an idea how, down here. And now I can just go, oh, now I want to grab my guitar and my uh, microphone and I want to plug in. Well, okay, I'll just come over here to my audio, audio recorder. There you go. Turn on my monitoring and hit record and I'm away. I'm recording. So the one, number one thing that GarageBand has is just the simplicity of the interface for getting up and getting creating immediately. Number two, GarageBand actually has some unique instruments that Logic does not, believe it or not. Uh, things like the World Instrument, we found that the French horn that's available in here isn't in Logic Pro, so there are actually some instruments that, believe it or not, you have to jump out here to GarageBand to add and then bring over. So you, you want to add like a nice sort of guzeng sound to, to your track? No Guzang. No, you don't got no Guzang in Logic Pro. <laughs> you want to add an air who? Everyone loves an air who, right? Yeah, you got all these. And you do actually have a surprisingly large number. People don't realize this, but in Logic Pro, people just look at the bass instruments. But if you come in here to your keyboard and you go to your more sounds, down in this other section, look at all these. You got a flute, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, French horn, brass ensemble, gluck, and spiel, all your world instruments. Everything's here. So we wanted to add a little French horn goodness to this track. We can do so. There you go. We don't have no French horn in Logic Pro. And look, yes, you can add a French horn. You have all the brass instruments. You have all the string instruments, all the studio instruments. So, yeah, you've got advantages, but you don't have everything. And I thought, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll highlight a few little uh, things that GarageBand has. Logic Pro doesn't. GarageBand has song sections, and song sections can actually be really good for arranging your tracks. So if, if for instance, I wanted to come in here and uh, split this one out, uh, just delete that. So I've got my um, little four bar loop that I've played with here. We'll just uh, bring that down to four bars. What if I wanted to um, make this a song section and then build on it in the next section? Well, yeah, you could like copy everything like you can in Logic Pro and you can split it out and bring it all across. But here in GarageBand, we can just come in here to our song sections and say, uh, all right, first section is going to be four bars. We'll just manual up that one. And let's duplicate this section. Uh, we'll duplicate it a couple of times. So now we've actually got three sections all with those same instruments. So what if we wanted to build this in terms of this guitar uh, doesn't come in there and this horn uh, we want to come in here. So you can actually layer it out that quickly. So we can come in here and uh, your first section will sound like this. And then because we have these song sections, we can easily build up a track. Great for beat building as well as doing something like this. Add some horns, baby. I'm actually like legit liking this song just quietly this may become a song all right uh the other thing that we have number four for garage band garage band supports say it with me folks inter app audio plugin now what's an inter app audio plugin well it's a way of using a different app to actually record directly into garage band it has been deprecated or at least listed for deprecation, which means removal, no longer supported by Apple in iOS, I think 13. It's been sitting on that list for a while, but it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not there. So if you're wondering where this is here, it's under your external instruments and you can actually add an external instrument by coming to here and as well as your AUV3 plugins, which you can use in Logic, you can also use these inter-app audio plugins. So any of these plugins, any of these uh, legacy plugins that have not come across to, uh, to, inter, uh, to AUV3, we can actually use here in GarageBand as instruments, which is... Um, 
which is a thing. And look, it's not going to be around for a while because, again, it's been deprecated anyway. But I know on the forums, a lot of people are talking about that, that, uh, that we have that. Um, yeah. So song sections, uh, song sections and then um, our inter-app audio of the net those two there. All right. Uh, number five, GarageBand is compatible with, guess what? iPhone, iPhone and older iPads. So the challenge that you have with Logic Pro is that it doesn't have any iPhone compatibility. So if I'm working on this project here in the studio and then I go for a walk, if you, you, you don't know this about me, I like to like wander around a lot. I go for long walks and I've usually got my phone with me. If I've got a Logic Pro project, I can't be playing with that on my phone. If I've got a GarageBand project, even when I'm working on a GarageBand project here in the studio, so when I was uh, creating Goats, the song you heard before, I would actually take it out with me on the road and listen to it as a mix. And then I'd be able to jump into the actual project in GarageBand and then tweak some settings, add a plug-in or reduce the volume of something and then play it back. So you can literally mix on the go. Now, can I just take my iPad with me? Well, of course I can, but it's a little bit harder to be walking around balancing an iPad versus using a phone. So it is an advantage that GarageBand has. Like this particular song, I actually really dig. And I think I love that finger style acoustic going along with the horns and the bar. I think this is a cool song. Kyle on drums. So if I want to play with this now, all I need to do is come out of here and uh, instead of calling this My Song 4, I just rename this because this is saving it right here on my iCloud drive. And we call this Pete's Cool Horn. And then we've got that saved. And see how that's syncing with iCloud? As soon as I walk out the door, I grab my phone and I got that track with me. I got the whole project with me and then I can make changes to it. And then I can come back here to the, the studio and jump on my iPad and it's sitting right here for me. So the iPhone compatibility, I think, is a good thing. Number six, we're on the homeward stretch here. Number six, GarageBand is currently version 2.3.14. Why am I mentioning this? Why is that important? Well, it's had 2.3.14 2 versions. So there's basically been around, I haven't counted, but 50 plus updates between GarageBand 1.0. GarageBand 2.0 was a massive update. 2.1 was a huge update that added Alchemy Synth, that added external instrument support, that added a whole bunch of stuff, 24-bit audio, automation, AUV3 plugin support. So there was a heap of stuff added in 2.2, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and now we're at 2.3.14. So over that time, GarageBand has ironed out the bugs. It has added features. It has fixed other features. It is a mature piece of software. It's been around for 10 years. It's super mature. So it means that when you're using it, you know that it's pretty much rock solid. Yes, it still crashes from time to time. Yes, it still has some issues from time to time. But as opposed to, uh, oh, I don't know, this young whippersnapper here that's version 1.0, this is going to have some bugs. We've already found plenty of them. If you've been watching my channel, you're watching Patrick, you're watching Jade Star, we're finding bugs. There's things where it crashes. Sometimes you have to close and reopen. Sometimes you have to unplug and replug in your audio interface. It is far from perfect because it shouldn't be. It's version 1.0 of a brand new software and it's taken something that is a desktop version of the software and brought it onto the iPad, which is phenomenal that it even works. Every time I press record and something happens, I'm kind of astounded. But you are an early adopter. If you're using Logic Pro right now, you're an early adopter. And if you are frustrated by things going wrong, that's where I think GarageBand's got you beat because GarageBand, you know what you're getting. You know the limitations. You know what it can and can't do. But what it can do, it does in a pretty rock solid way. Now, your mileage may vary, but that's been my experience. And number seven, and this is going to be a super self-serving one, but I'm going to go there anyway. GarageBand has an answer for everything. GarageBand has a tutorial for everything. I've been doing this channel for seven years. I, if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand, which I'm going to show you right now, you can go to my GarageBand iOS FAQ, this one here. Let's zoom in on it. Let's zoom in. I don't need to join the mailing list. I'm already on that. <laughs> <laughs> but this has everything, everything you've ever wanted to know. I've got over 2,000 videos on this channel just about GarageBand. So you're going to find the answer. The GarageBand users Facebook group has thousands of people that are super experienced in GarageBand. You, you've you just got everything there. If you want all that GarageBand information with a slightly different accent, the GarageBand guide. Patrick's been working his butt off for the last uh, seven, eight years on GarageBand iOS. So everything. GarageBand's been solved. It's been fixed. It's been completed. There is something out there on every topic 
for folks using GarageBand iOS. Logic Pro, you're a pioneer. You, you're there. You're there in the trenches. You're there learning and discovering. Like, I don't know everything. I was watching um, uh, Why Logic Pro Rules uh, creator. They're getting stuck in and they're learning things as well. So we're all back to square one. I mean, some of us have different advantages. I have the advantage that GarageBand iOS has a lot of similarities to Logic. And people that have used Logic for Mac have the advantage that a lot of the Logic features that I'm not familiar with, like flex time and all that sort of stuff, they already know about it. So yeah, it's, it's going to be different, but if you want something that has all the answers, that has everything solved already, well, that's GarageBand, isn't it? That's, uh, I'm in the wrong spot. That's this one, that's GarageBand. So that is my, that is my rant on this stuff. There are reasons why you should, and there's reasons why you shouldn't. And it all comes down to this. Let's finish with this. It depends. It's like music. It is subjective. It depends on you. It depends on your workflow. It depends on the type of music you're creating. It depends on what the outcome is that you're looking for. It's all about you. It's a personal choice. It's a personal thing. If you're finding that things are working perfectly for you in GarageBand or in whatever you're using, I don't care if you're using FL Studio, if you're using Logic, if you're using GarageBand, if you're using Pro Tools, if you're using Protona Studio One, if you're using Cakewalk, if you're using the voice recorder, if you're using a four track tape machine, are you making music? Does it work for you and your workflow? If the answer is yes, great, you win. If the answer is no, you might want to try something new and shiny. And if you try it and you don't like it, guess what? You get a month for free and you can go back to using whatever you want to use. So no harm, no foul. But what I would love, what I would love for us all to go out there and start promoting is that it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're using to create and it won't be for everyone. <laughs> I've almost had to uh, just get to the point where every time I see a comment from someone saying, oh, I would never buy a subscription model, I'll say, fine, then you'll probably never buy this. <laughs> and as I said, like very early on, we've had only had Logic Pro for a week and very early on I said, if you spend any more time than one sentence about why you're not going to use Logic Pro, you're probably wasting your time and you're definitely wasting ours because it should be as simple as I will never use something that has a subscription model. This has a subscription model, therefore I won't use it. End of. And you can be upset about it. You can be unhappy about it. You can not like it. You can wish it was different and that won't make it so. So let's get back to focusing on the creation because my mantra around here is create, record, release. And my goal here is to help you create, record and release your best music. And the best way to do that is to do whatever works for you and for your workflow. Mic drop, done. <laughs> <laughs> and Thomas says there, yes, you can check out the Garage Band FAQ at studiolivetoday.com slash garage band. Mark says, uh, workflow is key word for me. Maybe I'll go to Logic on iPad route down road, but I'll just keep sketching Garage Band iOS and finishing Logic Mac. Yeah. And look, if you just sort of keep an eye and an ear out of what we're doing over here, you might find that version 1.1 has a whole bunch of stuff that's really going to work for you, Mark. And you, you don't know. Thomas says it's been an adjustment just learning where the things are for Logic uh, for Mac are in Logic iPad. Most of them are there, just a matter of finding. Yeah, and, and I think I said that earlier, but I'll reinforce that, which is that I think that Logic for iOS is more for folks coming from GarageBand iOS or coming from an iPad or iPhone-based DAW as opposed to replicating exactly what's on your desktop. And I think that's deliberate and I think that's okay. The frustrating thing is that some of the keyboard shortcuts are not the same. Some of the places where you think things are are not the same. So it's not gonna be an easy jump back and forth. The whole round trip compatibility, I don't think it's gonna be as as easy as was maybe sold to us by Apple upfront. Uh, hello, Con. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here. Uh, do what makes you happy and don't crap on others for doing something different. See, that's as simple. That's all you have to say. But do what makes you happy and you don't have to crap on others if they do something different. Difference is good. Diversity is amazing. I know that <laughs> some people don't, uh, don't actually believe in that in 2023. But trust me, if everyone was the same, it would be so boring. If the world was full of Pete Johnses, my goodness, it would be terrible. Uh, create, record, release. That's it. Get it done. Uh, yeah, look, that's the other thing, Con. GarageBand is just ubiquitous. If you walk into an Apple store, every device you pick up has GarageBand. Every device, everything from an iPod Touch, which you can't get anymore because they discontinued them. Grr. But every iPhone, every iPad, every Mac, every device from the basic entry level to the latest MacBook Pro that's going to cost you 10 grand has GarageBand on it. So it is everywhere. It is out there. 
it is dominant. And I think, you know, the, the cool thing is we have a great community around GarageBand and we will build a great community around Logic Pro, but it's early days. That's the other thing. It's early days. Like, I know, nearly $3 trillion company, you're like, it's unacceptable that they don't have MIDI output. I've read that 15 times in the last day alone. And it's, like, it's a professional level DAW, it doesn't have MIDI output. Yeah, but Apple are actually pretty smart too. And even though the small slice of the small slice of the small slice would love MIDI output, I don't do MIDI output. I don't, I don't take my MIDI files and take them out of one thing and put them into another. I just create them in the thing I'm using and, and put them in there. Like there is a small subset. Maybe you're creating your own MIDI patterns that you then want to share or sell to other people in packs. That's cool. You just have to use Logic on a Mac to do that. Logic on iOS doesn't have it for now. And again, version 1.0, maybe they'll add it. Maybe it'll be put in there for a future update. We don't know. I know, poor, uh, poor iPod Touch, never seen it coming. Uh, we've got a few more minutes here for some questions. So once again, I will scroll back up and find any of the questions that have come in before because I think I saw a couple drop in while I was ranting. But if you do have any other questions, just pop a Q in front of your comment and I'll be able to find it. I've tagged your question there, Rena. I'll scroll up and see if we have any other cues. I don't think we do. We did a big Q&A the other day. Uh, yeah, Kyle. So the other thing is we did lose the names of our drummers, which is a bit of an interesting thing. So, uh, wrong screen. So here, you can see when you choose your drummer, and again, this is the whole um, you know simplification of things. GarageBand wanted this to be friendly. So our friendly friend, Kyle, I mean, they had no faces, but they're still friendly. Kyle, Logan, and Anders, Darcy, Mason, Levi, Graham, Parker, Austin, Tyrell, Nikki, Gavin, Rose, Curtis, Benny. A little bit white bread, those names, just quietly. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can choose your, your drummer there. In uh, Logic Pro, it has changed the nomenclature. So if you bring in a track like Anders, it'll still say Anders there. But if we added ourselves a new drummer track, what you'll notice is it is just called R&B drummer, modern R&B. So they're still faceless. They're still faceless people. But when you select them, pop brush, roots brush, 60s songwriter. So it tells you the style as opposed to naming them. So if you really like the fact that you get to have cool names of your drummers in GarageBand, you don't get that. G'day, Greg. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'll tag your question as well. I'll talk about buses in just a jiffy because that is a number one. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, what's it? Uh, what's it? Mark said, yeah, buses is number eight. Yeah, buses are pretty cool. Um, la, 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 la. Yeah, can you make a, up a Metallica riff if you can't change keys? I mean, you still can. You can still, you can use multiple keys in GarageBand, but you just have to kind of hack around and do it. Uh, right, see. I'm just tagging. Uh, yes, good point here from uh, Desmond Tondo. Uh, GarageBand, you can pitch shift Apple loops, but you uh, can't do your own stuff. You can't do your own thing. Uh, Mix Club, I've grabbed your question there. And uh, I think that's all the questions I can see. So if you do have any more questions, uh, Keith de Boudoir, I've grabbed your question there as well, my friend. And um, Con, so Logic will be downloaded. Will it be on the app for? No. So there's no, uh, there's no Logic Pro for iPhone or Android. It'll only be iPad and only ever will be iPad would be my um, assumption on that one. All right, uh, let's jump in and grab the questions that we've been given here, and then we can all go watch the hockey where the Vegas Golden Knights are up 3 nothing in Game 6. Whoop, whoop. Anyway, <laughs> I'm putting all my eggs in the Vegas Golden Knights basket since my Rangers were eliminated from the playoffs in the first round. Uh, Rena here. Hi, Rena here. It's Pete here. Pete, before I forget, can you please tell me why, as of late, when recording with headphones, I have monitor on... Why does it go to off or dim, not putting my mic through my headphones? Good question. I'm not sure. Um, I'm assuming if you're talking in GarageBand, let's, uh, let's open up GarageBand and jump over here. So if you're not sure what we're talking about here, monitoring is when you've got an audio interface plugged in, you can select monitoring. Now, monitoring works differently when you have an audio interface. I can't show you this the difference here, but it does work differently when you've got an audio interface and we come into this one. You can see I can turn my monitoring on or off and that will light up this button here. You're saying it's going to dim or you can't turn it on and off. Sometimes if you've got headphones and you're using, say, the headphone microphone, it will... Um, it will turn monitoring off because it doesn't want you to hear the audio. It'll, it'll basically have um, loopback protection. 
and there is, I believe that there's a setting in the settings that you can turn on and off whether you want loopback protection or not. Uh, it might actually be in the settings app. Going a little bit deep here, but that's what this uh, show is all about, isn't it? If we go to settings and we type in, by the way, if you didn't know, GarageBand has a whole separate settings section out here in the settings where you've got a bunch of things. Crosstalk protection. I think it's this one. Uh, pr protect against crosstalk from a guitar connected to the headphone jack. So it might be this one here. So you may need to jump in here. And if you're finding you can't monitor, but you do want to, you can turn that off. Just keep in mind, you may get crosstalk or loop back or interference or, or sort of echoing sound that can create those horrible, you know, the, the old classic thing of uh, the school principal getting up and the, the feedback. Yeah, you don't want that. So you can turn that off. Off. Out of interest, does Logic Pro have its own thing here? It does. I wonder what's in the Logic Pro advanced settings in here. Ooh, MIDI 2.0. Turn on Logic Pro MIDI 2.0 protocol to receive, record, and playback MIDI data. Huh, there you go. If you need to find the, the MIDI 2.0, if that's something, you can reset Logic Pro. You can reset identifier for privacy. That's weird. It's got the version there, 1.0, of course it is. Oh, you can't see it? Yeah, you can. License agreement and acknowledgement. So there's not much in there. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you if you wanted to come in here and uh, and play around with that, if you have, if you ever plug it in MIDI 2.0 gear and it's not working, come into those settings and maybe that's where it is. Thanks for your question though, Rena. Appreciate you. I uh, Google it and others are having the same problem. Yeah, maybe ask over at the um, GarageBand users Facebook group because uh, that is a great repository. And if you're having a problem, chances are someone else is having the same or a similar problem as well. Uh, hello, El Higgy. Hello, uh, FXQ. I've tagged your question there. If anyone else has any questions before we finish up, put a Q in your comment. Uh, Sean Palmer, I've grabbed yours as well. Let's just answer this now, in fact. Uh, can you run in, in, into AUM like Cubasis? Yes. So it, it's a host. So just like GarageBand, just like Cubasis, if you anything that you use within AUM with those, you can do. I haven't because I don't use AUM, to be very honest, but uh, I've seen others do it and it seems to work exactly the same way. Uh, yeah, buses. So what is a bus apart from a form of transport that you can use that is good for the environment <laughs> and usually not on time? Uh, a bus means just a sending of audio signal from one track to another. So your classic buses that you'd probably see in tracks are things like your reverb and your delay bus. So you can see here, because I brought this across from GarageBand, this has an echo and a reverb here on bus one and bus two. And you'll notice that each of these tracks actually have sends. So it's sending an amount of that track. So this is basically just brought across and replicated from GarageBand. However much master reverb and master echo I had on there, it'll actually change those. But the beauty part of this is I can choose each individual track and I can determine how much uh, echo or reverb is on there. And then I can even come down to here and turn up or down the amount of echo and reverb I have. So it kind of gives you double control. It gives you the ability to see how much you're going to send from each track, but then how much you're actually going to affect. And you can set up your own aux buses for anything you like, any effects or any processing you want to do. You can actually set up your own buses and then send little bits or all of each individual track to your buses. I don't use them a heap because we didn't have them in GarageBand, but I'm learning them now. Uh, Paul Stephen Cox, can you add the pointer button to the individual tracks rather than having to do it down at the mixer? Real question here, not sure. Can you add the pointer button? Pointer button. I'm not I'm not following what the pointer button is. Let's see if I can interpret this. Can you add the pointer button? Um, oh, are you talking about one of the ones that's in the track header? You can customize your track header. So you can, you can the track on, off, the freeze, and the input monitoring. You can add all of these. And uh, you can even have the track colors over there on the left. So you can add all of those. And you can even turn off the volume. If you don't want to have the volume there, if you only want to mix out on the other spot, you can do that. So I'm not sure if it's any one of those that you needed, but they're all here under your customize track header option there, Paul. So uh, I probably didn't answer that question correctly. So maybe maybe rephrase it down in the comments or, or jump over to the Logic Pro uh, iPad users Facebook group. There's a bunch of cool folks over there that can help you with stuff. Uh, in GarageBand, is it possible to, yeah, so good, good yeah, we, we went through that. Yes, you can indeed pitch shift um, GarageBand uh, Apple loops, but you can't do it for any external audio files, correct. Uh, does it have step effects uh, uh, and fat in multi-effects? Folks forgot about them, but they are great. I have, I, I think so. 
<laughs> I haven't played around with uh, the, the, the step sequencer. I've still only scratched the surface. I did see that um, the Logic Pro Rules did a step sequencer video, and uh, I'm always here to promote other cool creators, and I've got this one queued up to watch later. So Logic Pro Rules step sequencer. I'm sure it was that channel that had it. Uh, I can't find it now. Uh, there it is. Oh, no, it was Music Tech Help Guide. That's why, that's why I couldn't find it, uh, which is another one of my favorite Logic creators. So Music Tech Help Guy here, Logic Pro for iPad, the Step Sequencer Browser and Sound Library. So that's one that I'm going to be watching today because, um, yeah, he creates some great videos and uh, that looks like it's going to tell us a lot more. And, uh, hey, I learn. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not beyond learning from other people. I watch everyone else's videos because different people will interpret things in different ways and it will often help. Uh, can you zoom audio files more in Logic Pro or is it the same? Yeah, you've got a heap better zoom capability. That's another thing we didn't cover. So not only can you hear in the project, you can obviously zoom out and zoom in just like you can in GarageBand, but you can also go up and down. So where you have stereo files, this is particularly useful. I don't have any in this one, but you can actually see the separation of the stereo files. So you do get much better range. And then when you're coming in to do your editing in here, so we'll go into the edit in the editor region. Yeah, you've got real fine tune, fine comb. You can go right down to the sample level there. And actually, so if you're really like trying to split and trying to find the exact spot you want to split, you've got really uh, finite detail there. And you can even turn your um, snap to grid off. And then you've got absolute ultimate control. You can go right down to the individual sample. So yes, much better zooming capability here in Logic Pro if you're the sort of person that wants to do some really fine tuning editing. It's going to work a lot better for you. Uh, great question. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, we've answered Sean's question. Uh, if anyone has any final questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. Uh, what about if I had an expression pedal with Bias FX Zoom Mobile running through Logic. Will it control the master volume in Logic as well as the effects in Bias? Probably. I don't know. Probably. Uh, there you go. Still three, no, nothing at the end of the one. Yeah, good question. It's 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 sort of next level stuff that I don't use because I'm a fairly simple kind of guy. And to be honest, I don't do a lot of that sort of live processing. I will plug my guitar in. I'll throw the plugins or the amp sims on it and I'll record it. So that might be one for this group here. Yeah, the Logic. In fact, I've got to add it. I need to add it to my um, Logic iPad page. I'll do that today. But for now, if you search Logic Pro for iPad, it's a Facebook group. It is run by Patrick from the GarageBand Guide, so you know it's quality. And uh, I'm one of the moderators over there as well, so it's uh, good stuff indeed. Yes, I've got to go watch hockey too uh, because, uh, yeah, it's the it's the finals. It's the Western Conference finals and the uh, Golden Knights look like they might uh, clinch a, a final spot. Uh, how do you like the vocal effects for Logic? Yeah, really good. Uh, the space designer, the, the reverb that you have in there and the delays, like it's just, you have so much more finite control that it, yeah, it's really easy to sculpt a sound. I mean, it's a little overwhelming. So I've, I've found that I've been playing with the preset. So you've got some great presets you can play with. So for instance, if we came in here to this lead vocal, let's just play this. So if you come into, I like to use a mixer here just to get a good view of this one. So this is the track that we have on here. Uh, this one's soloed. So you can actually see that we've got the compressor, the EQ. So these are all the ones that have come across here from GarageBand. But if you come in here, like the number, like even just the dynamics control that we have, like you've got DSs in there, you've got the multiprocessor, limiter, noise gate. Uh, but uh, yeah, things like your delay, the stereo delay that you have in here is actually really cool. Um, da, 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 double tap, whoop, tap, show the details. So yeah, you, you've got a bunch of cool presets. And the cool thing about Logic Pro is you can just go to your browser here and it will give you the presets for whatever plugin you're looking at. So you can actually like bring in, well, sorry, if you go out of the instrument patches <laughs> and you go to plugin presets, it'll give you all these. So you've got like Childhood Room, Forgotten Dream, Mantra. So if you wanted like a Mind Palace effect, man, we can just tap that one and it's going to give us the Mind Palace stereo delay. Hey, with all the things that are happening. Okay. If you want to change it up, so to like uh, Whispered Wah, we can do that there. Hey, with all the things that are happening.
Yeah, so the presets are actually your friend here because you can get overwhelmed. Like you look at all of these different options and you're like, I don't know where to start. So start with a preset, childhood room, and then you can sort of start tweaking it from there and changing the different filters, changing the different delay times and amounts. So yeah, loving, loving the, uh, loving the vocal effects in Logic thus far. All right, I think we're nearly there. Do we have any final questions? Uh, I had a question before my message bugged. In GarageBand, can you change the tone of the stock sounds, but not in the imported files? What about Logic? Can change the tone of the stock sounds, but not the imported. Yeah, so Logic actually has much better ability. If you're bringing in sounds, and I showed this, if, if you check out my beginner's guide, I actually showed a lot of this in detail. Uh, so you can actually bring in any sound you like, but you've got to do it from the files app. And when you bring it in from the files app, you can bring it in as either just its audio, or you can actually add it as a sampler track. And therefore you can create a MIDI track and you can actually jump in there and, and sculpt the tone. So using the, the sampler, the quick sampler, or even better, the sample alchemy, you can actually completely change anything. So not only your MIDI tracks, but you can bring in any file externally and play around with it and get some pretty cool sounds and effects out of it. It's a, it's a good thing. Uh, it's flex pitch and slicing options. So still no flex pitch. That's probably the the, the number one thing that I'm seeing people <laughs> complain about is that there's no flex pitch in Logic uh, on iPad. There is the, the flex, like the beat matching. So you can use the stretch and you can use the flex time, but there's no flex pitch. And to be honest, I um, I was quite surprised by how many people seem to be really bummed by that. I didn't realize how many people were actually using flex pitch to actually change the pitch. And I'm like... Like it's probably because of the music that I create doesn't really call for it. Like in a punk vocal or in, in guitars and in, in keys and in drums, you're not really doing flex pitch stuff much. But I guess if you were doing remixing, sampling, beat making, you would use flex pitch a lot more because you'd want to bring in samples and you want to quickly and easily say, ah, oh, this sample's in D, but the project's in G. I want to just move it um, or have a sample where you've got different notes and actually being able to, um, to adjust those. I, I personally don't do it, but a lot of people... Uh, a lot of devs that will need to give serious consideration to adding AUV. Yeah, exactly. Um, the the interrap audio ones uh, are definitely going to have to move to AUV3, uh, hopefully in the future. All right. Uh, is there a vocal multiplier in Logic like an ensemble? There's bound to be. I haven't played with it but there's bound to be uh, an effect somewhere in there in the stock plugins that have something like that. Uh, and yeah, exactly. They may add it in the future. So version 1.1 may have flex pitch. We don't know. Uh, that's, that's the thing. If you want to be an early adopter, jump in and play with it now, but it's, won't be, it's not fully baked yet. It won't be everything and a box of dice. So at the moment, it's, it's only a half bucket of fish in a year or so. Version 1.1, 1.2, 2.0, who knows? It might be a complete bucket of fish can hope we can dream we can dream about fish all right that is going to do it for this week's episode of garage band weekly if you had fun if you learned something if i answered your question well thumbs up if i didn't thumbs down and don't forget if you're watching on the replay we love you just as much you can jump down to the comments right now and let me know what you thought let me know what you think of logic for ipad will you stick with garage band are you using something completely different let me know your thoughts and ask any questions there as well and do not forget that if you want to keep up with everything that i'm doing here to do with everything you can go to studiolivetoday.com but more specifically if you go to my little logic ipad.com web page you're going to come jump straight to this section where you can check out my beginner's guide video, all of my videos there. You can check out the user guide. You can look at all the information, your compatible iPads. Everything is there. If you just if you just click this link here, this will take you to the playlist. And this has got every video I'm doing. So the next ones we've got coming out in the next couple of days, we're looking at multiple time signatures. We're looking at multiple uh, key signatures as well. So the, the last two were our tempos. So you can use multiple tempos and you can use your markers. So even though we don't have song sections, in Logic Pro, we do have markers. So that playlist is available for you right there at logicipad.com. Thank you again for being here. It's always a blast hanging out with you fine folks. And uh, as we say at the end of each and every show, uh, please, this week, be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Keep creating, and I'll see you next time right here on Garage Band. <laughs>